Hey everybody, Bill here from Ponds Aikido. Well, I planned on making this video earlier in the week, but we had kind of strange weather here in Michigan. Julia was off school two days, kind of threw off all of our schedules. So I'm finally getting to it today here Friday, just the day before our update tomorrow. But hey, better late than never, right? So, is keto killing us? Is keto killing me? Is keto killing you? You know, you hear from your friends and family and concerned friends and family and relatives and uh, just people out there in the community that keto is bad, keto is clogging your heart, keto will kill you, you're going to have a heart attack because you're eating all the fats and all the meats and all the things of that nature. Well, I got a little different way of looking at that. I spent 10 years diabetic and easily 35 years overweight. I'm 52 years old now. I've been doing keto since December 1st of 2018. I think I'm 14 months and a couple weeks in at this point. And I too was concerned as well as wanted to check out some things about the whole body, like my heart and my liver and things of that nature, my eyes. So I took the time to go get some tests done and I'm comparing them to a few years back just to kind of give you guys an idea, where do I stand after 14 months of doing keto? Um, where do I stand versus two years ago, five years ago? So I got some results here in front of me, and I'm going to read some of the proof in the pudding, so to speak. So let's start out with the probably the most important. I'm type 2 diabetic, 52 years old, been on medicines for 10 years. Each year they progressively got more and more medicines higher A1Cs, just doing bad, not, not really doing good. So when I started keto in December of 2018, I wanted to see where it was going to put me. Well, here's some numbers. 2015, my A1C was 9.6. That's horrible. We want it to be like under 5.9, right? 2016, 9.7, a little higher. 2017, 9.7, no change. 2019, 7.3. I had been on keto for just over two months at that point. So I got a drop from 9.7 to 7.3. 2020, just about a week ago here in February, 6.8. So I am on the right track here with this. Uh, starting in the 9.6, 9.7 a couple of years back, dropping down to 7.3 after a few months of keto, 6.8 now. Ideally, I'd like to get it under 5.9 down the road, just trusting the process and keeping going forward with it. Of course, I've lost some weight. I'm, I think I'm about 53, 55 pounds down from when I started keto. I'd like that to be more. I'm still struggling with some sugar issues, even though I've been able to get off almost all of my medicines. I'm no longer taking uh, insulin, 140 units a day. I've cut my metformin in half from 2,000 to 1,000. No longer on gabapentin, 3,600 milligram. No longer on Genuvia, 100 milligram. I mean, the list goes on. Amaryl, I was taking 8 milligram. Now I'm not taking it. Blood pressure medicine, I was having to take it because I had blood, high blood pressure. No longer need to take it. Um, my cholesterol medicine is cut in half at this point, and I'm looking to reduce that again soon. So, you know, things overall are looking pretty good. So, Cholesterol, that's another big one. Everybody is, of course, concerned because we're eating fats and meats and things of that nature. Where's my cholesterol at? Well, let's take a look. My cholesterol was never really horrible, but I was on Lipitor 80 milligram for some of these readings I'll be reading you. 2015, my cholesterol total was 185. You want your cholesterol between 70 and 199. That's the range. So 185. Triglycerides, they want between 1 and 148. Mine were 197. LDL, they want between 50 and 129. Mine were 111. So that was okay. HDL, that's your good cholesterol. You want that higher. The higher the number, the better. 40 to 90 is the range. I was 34, so I was a little shy of that one. And the ratio, that's the, you know, are you doing good or not? They want your ratio 1.8 to 4.9. Mine was 5.4. Now that was on the Pator 80 milligram. That was in 2015. 2017, very similar numbers, 185 cholesterol, 205 triglycerides, LDL was 137, a little higher, uh, HDL, 
was 35, so it was one point higher, but still not in range yet at 40 to 90. And the ratio was 6.1, so not good. Uh, 2019, where I had been on keto for two and a half months at this point, cholesterol 184, stayed the same. Triglycerides dropped tremendously, 112. And that actually put me in the range of 0 to 148 within range for the first time. LDL, 119. That ended up being in the regular range too, 50 to 129. HDL went from 34 and 35 up to 43. So much better there. And my ratio started out uh, at 5.4 and 6.1 years previous was now in 2019, 4.3. So, and that was only two and a half months being on keto. So I was very happy to see some of those numbers. Then just a week ago here in February, 2020, I did my blood work again. My total cholesterol now, 14 months of eating uh, sat, uh, unsaturated fats and whole foods and cutting out the processed foods and cutting out the sugars. And of course, you're getting those fats and those meats in. My overall cholesterol, 178. Even better. Triglycerides, 106. Pretty good. LDL, 114. Again, right in line. HDL, this is important. It's gone from 34 and 35 up to 43 and stayed at 43. The range now is 4.1 for me. So each year I look at my cholesterol and each year I look at my A1C from where I was before keto to where I am now on keto and after four month, 14 months of keto, I'm doing very well. My doctors just keep saying, keep doing what you're doing because you're doing a great job. So now we have A1C and cholesterol talked about and both of those have been very good improvements. Not to mention I've lost over 50 pounds. I would like to have lost over 100 pounds or 75 pounds, but this is real life. You know, uh, I'm doing what I can. I'm doing the best I can, and I'm seeing improvements. Part of it might be my age, uh, but I'm not going off the rails, and I'm certainly not having cheat days. Um, so, you know, I'm doing my best. Still fighting with that sugar. So another concern I had, valid concern of being 35, 40 years overweight, was overweight since I was a little kid. Um, certainly not eating the best. Certainly not taking care of myself for the 51 years or 50 years before I started keto, right? Is my heart okay? Are my arteries clogged? Obviously, as soon as you tell someone you're doing keto, immediately they look at you like, oh, I feel so bad for you. You're going to die as they go out to Olive Garden and get the endless breadsticks and pasta and go to McDonald's and get their French fries, Big Mac and Coke and think nothing of it, but they want to judge you for eating some bacon or eating some, you know, nuts and seeds and whole foods and steak or a hamburger, right? Well, anyway, I wanted to get my part checked out. I found a thing through the hospital for $75. I could get what they called a CT calcium scan, and it would tell me if there were black blockages in my main arteries of my heart. So I spent $75, and I was really curious, and I was a little nervous. I wanted to know, you know, is that 51 years of not taking care of myself or the year or so here on keto, you know, is anything causing problems with my heart? I want to know. I got two kids I love dearly and, and Stacy, of course, too, you know, and I want to live. So I go get this checked out. I get a call from the cardiologist and uh, who reviews the tests. I get a little nervous. I call them back and he says, well, looking at your history and looking at you've been overweight, high cholesterol, diabetic, I was expecting to see, you know, you soon. I was expecting to see you soon because we were going to have to have some discussions about what we need to do to, to your heart. And he said, I'm very glad to tell you that your score is better than most people your age and certainly better than most people who have the conditions you have. My total score for the calcium CT scan of all four main arteries was a 71 total. And anything under 100, they consider that good. 100 to 300, moderate amounts, changing your diet, things of that nature. 300 and above, 300 to 1,000, we got to get you in here. You know, you're 50% or more blocked in your arteries. So, ironically, his sheet said, uh, eat unsaturated natural fats like fish, tuna, nuts, seeds, avocados, and olive oil. Well, guess what? That's what we do on keto. 
and it says increase your fiber. Brussels sprouts, broccoli, asparagus, avocado, flaxseed oil, cauliflower. Guess what? That's what we do on keto. Shh. Don't tell them the secret. And here's the thing. It says limit and reduce. Sugars, processed foods, and saturated fats. Well, you know, I still have a hamburger. I still have a steak. I still have some salami here and there. But it's not my staple. It's not my everyday. It's not my primary meals. So, yeah, I'm doing pretty good with those things, I think. Next comes the eyes. Uh, being diabetic, you got to be careful with a lot of your extremities and your eyes, your feet, your toes, your hands, everything. All important, right? Well, back in 215, I had a eye exam for diabetics, which is a little more in depth. And it's a slight thickening of the blood vessels of the eye with a few small clots developing. Monitor and watch. So basically they're saying, hey, watch those eyes, right? Well, here's something that's interesting. I just did, in February, another diabetic eye exam in 2020 here. It says, no traces or thickening of the blood vessels in the eye. No clots appear. 100% normal blood vessels. And here's the other interesting part. I've been wearing glasses since about 6th grade, maybe 7th grade. And each maybe 3 to 5 years, I've noticed my script will go up. Well, guess what? This was the first year my script actually went better. I think it has to maybe do with inflammation or or just the vessels being in better shape or something. I'm not really sure exactly, but my script for the first time ever has gone down 0.75. So I used to be at 3.75, now I'm at 3.0. That's that's really cool. I'll take it. So diabetic eye exam, check. Calcium heart scan, check. A1C, check. Cholesterol, check. What's left? Oh, liver. Well, of course we're hurting ourselves, right? So I had two tests done, an AST and an ALT. An AST tests your liver for blood da for damage, for a blood test. And the ideal range should be 0 to 34. In 2014, I was 91, three times the norm. In 2015, I was 69, again double the norm. In 2019, after two and a half months of keto, I dropped to 18 in norm for once, 0 to 34. 2020, just about a week ago here when I did my blood work, 11. So my current AST, 0 to 34's range, is 11, where it used to be up in the 90s just a few years back. So I think we've kind of uh, eliminated that as a potential problem. And ALT, which is another blood test, again for liver and uh, supposedly for damages of the liver. The range is 90, uh, excuse me, the range is 9 to 47 for an average range. In 2014, I was 157. So again, three times the range. In 2016, I was 113, double the range. In 2019, I was 50. That was after two and a half months of keto. So I dropped from 157 to 113 to a 50 after just two and a half months of keto. And that was almost within range, 9 to 47. And I am proud to say that as February 2020, my latest ALT blood test is a 22, totally within range. 9 to 47 is the range. So again, AST, ALT, diabetic eye exam, CT calcium heart check scan, cholesterol, A1C, all fantastic numbers. When I see my doctor and he gets copies of all these different tests and specialists that I see, he just looks at me and says, Bill, you know, obviously the weight loss is great, but your numbers are coming in line way more than I ever expected. I don't even see the endocrinologist anymore. I'm working with the primary doctor now about reducing my sugars and getting off of the diabetic medicines. I'm close. I'm a 6.8 on the A1C. I need to be 5.9 or less to be considered not diabetic anymore. I'm trying to just trust the process, continue the journey, stick with it, be patient. Uh, I'm still struggling with sugars. I, I won't lie to you guys. I'll tell you every Saturday where I'm at, you know, what my weight is. And a lot of times it's not even moving lately, but I'm not going to just break free and go out and go crazy. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to try different things. 
I'm going to work with the doctors, which is, I feel important. Um, and I just want to put this out here for anybody who is type two, if you're not getting the weight loss you're, you're hoping for. I would love to say I've lost a hundred pounds. I haven't. I'm somewhere about 53, 55 pounds, depending on the scale that week. But you know what? I will take all of these other benefits. There are so many other benefits that come along with these blood tests, like inflammation. I'm no longer anywhere near as sore as I used to be. I used to have to take like a BioFlex, like the joint supplements and everything. I don't take those anymore. I don't have as much pain in those areas and in those respects anymore. Um, I, I love being off most of my diabetic medicines, and I cannot wait to have a party for being off all of them eventually. I've cut that cholesterol medicine in half from 80 milligram to 40 milligram. And I'm hoping that soon I'll be able to cut that again to either 20 or try a trial of six months of nothing and just see if I can retain those cholesterol numbers. But they're going down even with the medicines going down and the weight going down. So I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to keep on track. And I hope that maybe this will be something that will give somebody a little bit of insight as to you know, should I try it or will it hurt me? Uh, I would say in my case, at least in my situation, no, it hasn't. And it's been a godsend, I think. I want to thank Stacy so much for doing this with me. She ended up losing over 50 pounds. She dropped from a size 18 to 20 down to a size 6. She feels great. She looks fantastic. She's, you know, just doing fantastic with doing keto. But she really did this mainly to help me. And I think she thought it would be much easier if we did this together when we make a dinner or when we have some kind of a, a gathering or something, when she's just making some fathead pizzas or something. She does that and she eats it with me. And of course, she's benefiting from all this too. But I really want to say thank you to Sace for sticking with it with me and making it so much easier and helpful. Um, my kids, of course, do not do keto and I still have Doritos and Pringles and things for them. But I've been trying to also offer them the things that we're eating as whole foods and other options too. So I think that they're benefiting from it slowly. And of course, they see the changes in Stacy and I too. So hopefully, if nothing else, we're putting it into their brain, you know, eat real food, eat whole food. You know, I still buy the stuff that I want to buy for, that they want to eat. Um, but I'm also trying to slowly change those habits and options and choices for them too. So my biggest regret of all this, not doing it sooner, not being smart enough to have done this at 45, uh, you know, or 40 or something. Um, all I can do is move forward and do the best I can with every day that I've got left. So, you know, I just want that to put that out there for everybody or anybody that was questioning or that have concerns. Uh, I have personal family and friends in the online community that, you know, tell me, that that's a bad thing for you to be doing keto and stuff. And I just try and explain it as a whole foods option and eliminating processed foods, eliminating sugars, eliminating it if it's made in a box. And that, you know, my choice is whole food, real food, vegetables, fiber, good, good meats, you know, and that's pretty much what I stick to. Do I have some bacon now and then? Sure. Do I have a steak? Absolutely. Freaking awesome. <laughs> but, uh, I don't think I'm killing myself, especially with all these results and everything. It's kind of proven, proof in the pudding here that uh, things are going in a really good direction. And I'm getting off all these medicines and stuff too. So even though I don't have the huge weight losses, which I'm working on, I'm doing my intermittent fasting of 16 8 windows every day. And I just started to reintroduce um, small fasts per week. This particular week, uh, today is Friday. And I'm on uh, hour number 68 of my fast. And I'm going to try and extend this until tomorrow morning when we do our Saturday morning update, which would put me at 84 hours if I'm successful with that. I think I will be. You know what the hardest part about that is? Is when you're fasting and you're making food for the kids, like I just made Julia a hamburger and a little pickle and a couple little slices of an orange. Oh, my gosh. You smell that stuff and you see it and you're making it and you're preparing it. It's hard. I had to make it and step away. But again, it's just part of the process. I got to trust the process and stick with it. So I'm sticking with my fast to try and break this insulin resistance that I'm dealing with. And I'm hoping to get back into ketosis. 
I am still experiencing high sugars. I'm not even eating food. I was taking all kinds of, you know, flack and a little bit of criticism and, and suggestions of, hey, do this and do this. You know, it's, it's because you're eating this or it's because you're not doing this. Well, you know what? Even with no food in me for three days, my sugar today was 209. I'm fighting this insulin resistance. I, I remember reading from Dr. Fung that um, if you're fasting, that your pancreas creates like the sugars and the insulins and stuff, it actually pushes all that stuff out. And that's kind of what helps to get your body flushing of that stuff. So I'm trying not to be too concerned. I'm drinking tons of water, drinking electrolytes, but the sugars really kick my butt here, you know? So there are days I get a, a 117 and I'm excited. And there's days I get a 175 and I'm a little confused. And there's days like today, after three days of fasting, I get a 209. What the heck, right? But hey, what can you do? Just keep going. Keep trusting it. Keep pushing it. Try to break this insulin resistance with my situation being type 2. I understand everybody's keto is different. Everybody does keto differently too. Some are super lazy and love eating bacon and drinking diet pop. And some are super strict and look at every label and every ingredient. I'm somewhere in the middle. I try and do what they call common sense keto. If it's a whole food, if it's real, I'll eat it. And I try and, you know, vary it up and make it work for me. So... I hope that everybody sticks with their journey. If you're considering keto, definitely stick with it. Try and not get discouraged by weeks where you don't lose. Do measurements. They all help. And uh, I'm looking forward to 2020, seeing even more increases and in, in positive changes on my blood works and my tests and my body and my weight. And uh, I, I hope the best for you guys too if you're doing the same thing. And I guess I was just mainly doing this to dispel any family, friends, or online community uh, concerns about, you know, you're killing yourself. You're doing bad. You're, you're going to hurt yourself, and you're eating all that meat and all those fats and things. You know, it's the fats you eat, and it's the meat you eat, and it's the way you take care of yourself. And uh, I'm, I'm feeling like this is the right choice for me, especially backed up by all these results. Um, I could still drop dead of a heart attack tomorrow. I mean, nothing's guaranteed in this life but I'm feeling better than I have in a long, long time. So I think I'm on the right path and the right journey. And uh, I hope you stick around and check out where Stacy and I are in the next six months, in the next year, and then the next year, and the next year. And I uh, hope to bring you more content. And if you have any questions or you have a success story, even if it's a failure and you're considering redoing keto, put it in the comments below. Everybody here has been really helpful. Um, suggestions and ideas. And I appreciate all of you so much. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you again. And everybody have a great week and stick with your keto, trust the process, be patient, and good things will come to you if you stick with it. Bye.